Oh my god. How the, how the heck does this thing work? Come on, gears. Whoa, you don't want to be like that guy. He was definitely having some gear and issues. No, do you know what? I always think changing gear properly is a bit of a dark art. So here is how to change gear like a pro. First up, you want to shift properly. You got to look after your kit properly. Drivetrain maintenance is crucial. So keeping things lubed up and running clean and smoothly. Now look, today it's bone dry, blue skies. And are you thinking, Rich, I don't look too bad. You're wrong. You're wrong, people. Look, it's filthy. There is so much dust on this. And what that happens is that gets in all the links of the chain and it'll cause wear and tear. Now, granted, it's not quite like those winter conditions where that mud and grit is going to really wear this drivetrain out but I would strongly recommend looking after your drivetrain, giving it a good clean now and again in those summer months or certainly after every filthy ride in the winter. And then when it comes to keeping it properly lubricated, you're gonna to wanna to use the right kind of lube. So wet lube for wet conditions, dry lube for dry conditions, and all weather lube for guess what? All weather conditions. It's hopeless trying to shift gear properly if your gears aren't set up correctly, if they're not properly Index. Now, what I mean by this is correct cable tension, B tension screws, and limit screws all set up as they should be to work absolutely flawlessly. So, here's roughly how you do it limit screws to begin with, and these do exactly as they say they limit what the mech does, how much movement at the top of the cassette and at the bottom of the cassette will happen. So, by undoing or tightening them, they will stop the chain from jumping off the smaller sprocket or jumping off the back of the cassette into the spokes. Cable tension next in. So whether you've put a new gear cable in or the existing one isn't quite shifting right, this can be rectified by using the barrel adjuster on the shifter here. Now what that's gonna do is by turning it one way or the other at either take away or put tension onto the cable. So if you'll find your gears aren't moving up the cassette enough, they're not quite shifting that mech far enough, you're gonna wanna add tension onto that barrel adjuster. So what that does is then tightens the cable and essentially allows it to shift further. If it's not jumping down each gear enough down the cassette, then you're gonna undo and wind off a bit of that tension to allow it to shift that little bit further and that little bit more. B tension next, and it's normally a singular screw at the back of the mech. Now what the B tension screw does is adjust how far away the top jockey wheel sits away from the cassette. So you wanna adjust this so that when you're shifting through the gears, that that top jockey wheel isn't overlapping or pushing against the cassette. It should be moving nice and freely. Some manufacturers will actually have built-in guides as to where this should be. So it is easiest to index your gears in a work stand or something like this. However, it's not essential. You can actually do it whilst riding along. Okay, so your gears are now running a silky smooth, they're indexed to perfection. But when do you exactly change gear? So knowing when to change gear is an art form in itself. However, I've got some top tips for you, so fear not. First up is looking plenty far ahead down the trail or up the trail, wherever there's a change in incline, basically. So you want to be constantly scouring ahead, looking a good distance in front of you so that you can preempt the gear that you're going to need to be in. So you can change gear beforehand rather than smashing through the gears when you get to it. It's something that you'll see the pros do all the time. They'll always be in the right gear at the right time. It'll only be emergency situations where you do hear them really getting on the gas, smashing through the gears. Preemptive gear changes, they're gonna do wonders for your drivetrain as well. If you do start smashing through the gears, this is gonna greatly increase the chance of breaking a chain, snapping something off, doing some serious drivetrain damage. So, like I said, eyes up, look ahead, kind of read the terrain that you're riding and change gear beforehand. Preemptive gear changes, that is the key. So a quick run through, look, eyes up, looking ahead, it's gonna start kicking up, so I'm changing gear now. I'm in an easy gear, good cadence, I'm spinning up. No stress on the gears, and we're through. So I've talked about when to shift gear, and I briefly mentioned about them crunching. So let's talk about just how you change gear, especially when under load. To effectively, efficiently, and smoothly change gear then, well, there's a few things you wanna do. First off, backing off the power and just slowly slotting it into gear. Hear there? You can barely hear it change gear. Because what I did is instead of keeping the power on the pedal stroke, I eased off a touch that there wasn't any tension on the chain so the mech could essentially push it across slightly smoothly. Smoothly? Now if you're standing up on the gas out the pedals, then this is slightly harder to do, but it is possible. I just changed gear then and all it was was a slight backing off of the power was required. 
So there we have it then, some top tips to get you shifting like an absolute boss. Hopefully they'll help you out and get your bike running smoother, you going faster and your drivetrain lasting longer. Talking of drivetrain lasting longer, we have got loads of videos over on tech all about looking after that drivetrain if you want to learn a little bit more. But look, from me, for now, I am out of here. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you later.